Driving from one side of Melbourne to the other is never a short trip, but there was one day in January 2020 when that drive never felt longer for Grace Stewart. I think I was just in a bit of disbelief, but then also on autopilot. Could have turned around a lot of times, I think. For the past 30 hours, she'd been unable to shower, staying in the clothes she alleges she was raped in, in order to preserve any evidence. It meant, you know, staying in my underwear um, uh, until I did the forensic medical, and, and that's something that uh, was quite traumatic. I couldn't wash, um, I had to be very careful going to the bathroom um, because you get all kinds of swabs. The night before, the teacher had called a rape crisis helpline, hoping to see a doctor that could perform the forensic exam as soon as possible. I just assumed that every emergency department would be able to do them. I didn't realise that after hours, there's only one person for the whole of Melbourne that facilitates those medical exams. When she was told she'd be waiting hours to see the one doctor on call that night in Melbourne, she instead booked an appointment the next day across town. I would have loved for everything to be wrapped up and for me to have gone home to bed. You want to try and um, get the experience off you. Grace's experience is not uncommon. In a city of five million people, there is only one forensic doctor available at night to see rape and assault victims. Sometimes there's none at all. Last year there were nearly 5,000 rapes recorded and almost 6,000 indecent assaults reported in Victoria. Forensic doctors examined just over 400 people. I hate to think that the amount of offenders that are still in the community because it's just been too difficult. In Victoria, forensic doctors are employed by the Institute of Forensic Medicine and are funded by the police. That's different to other states and many other countries where forensic services are run by health departments. Dr John Gall has worked as a forensic medical doctor in Victoria. He says placing the profession under the banner of the police changes the kind of care a victim receives. The police are looking on this person really as a crime scene, whereas from a doctor's perspective, this is a person. And your primary uh, responsibility of that person is their care and well-being. The forensic issues are secondary. And unfortunately, there's a bit of a conflict. Outside Victoria, things are done differently. ACT's forensic unit here in Canberra's biggest hospital sits within the capital's health department. And this is our forensic fridge. Sitting under the health department banner means more resources and more staff. We have one doctor and one nurse, Ross to Dawn, for a population of about 420,000, and that's a 24-hour roster. Dr Vanita Parekh set up the ACT's forensic unit. Health always comes first for each patient and then the forensic evidence is second. For all patients that we see, their health needs are always met first. She's outraged by the wait times in Victoria. It actually fills me with horror to think that someone who's taken the courage um, to report has to wait that period of time. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if the outcome from that was that those patients then decided not to report. Attorney General Jacqueline Symes said in a statement, the government had more work to do and acknowledged its duty to not add to victims' pain. Back in Melbourne, every night is a challenge for doctors and support workers. Karen Wolford works with victims of assault. Tonight, she's on call in Melbourne's West. Weekend nights are normally quite busy. As people start to go out and things start to happen, that's when we might get a few more calls. While we're filming with her, she receives a message that lays bare the doctor shortage. I just received an email and it says that um, they won't be available from 11pm, so it looks like we don't have a, a forensic medical officer on call at the moment, all night. 
If Karen does get a call, she'll race to the hospital to meet the victim before they get there. I tell them it's not their fault, that it's never their fault. And then we talk about, you know, how incredibly brave it is for them to, to come forward and to seek help like they're doing. There were two occasions this week where for long periods of time, 12 hours or more, we didn't have a forensic medical officer that we could call on. Case workers, doctors and advocates all argue the long waits mean many victims don't pursue charges. To be told that you can't shower and change your clothes or do anything for, an, you know, and it's sometimes not even a defined period of time. And of course, many of them are going to say, I just can't do this, I'm sorry. The system of forensic examinations is in dire trouble. Last year, former judge Tony North warned the Victorian government that the entire system was failing victims of sexual offences. We found that the system was leading them down. His report for the Law Reform Commission recommended efforts to boost the number of forensic nurses and vastly improve access to services. We in Victoria are way, way out of kilter with the rest of Australia and most parts of the world in making provision for such um, examination. In a statement, the Institute of Forensic Medicine said it backed most of the recommendations in the Law Reform Report and that, in most cases, doctors did attend within a two-hour target. And it's not just sexual assaults. Victoria's forensic doctors are also required to take toxicology samples, assess suspects and provide expert evidence in court. This leaves the few staff available to do the job overworked. 7.30 has seen complaints lodged with WorkSafe Victoria claiming unsafe work practices. Doctors say they have fallen asleep while driving as they cover both day and night shifts. You work one day, then you're on call at night, and you work the next day as well. And unlike most other professions where you'll work only nights or only days or have a particular roster, unfortunately you're working all those hours. While any changes to the system will come too late for Grace Stewart, she wants to make sure other survivors don't go through what she's experienced. We put all of this emphasis on, on victims saying, please come forward, do these processes. It should be a lot easier.